Hello, my name is Micah, and I'm here with another journal flip through. As you can see, I thought this journal was only going to be for July, and it took me all the way through August to finish this, so I had to add the little August there. Uh, this journal is handmade by me. This beautiful handmade paper is from a paper pack by Joanne, uh, the store. I'm gonna see if I can still find the link to this. I highly recommend this paper pack. It's just beautiful paper. And then here we have a sticker from my shop, Better Day Boutique. Again, everything and everyone that I mention, I'll leave links to everybody's shops below. And then if we open this up, we have a little pocket here with all kinds of little bits and pieces. Here we have the prompt list for Junk Journal July by Meg Journals. I circled the ones that I did. Um, really fun, these prompt lists, even if you don't do them all, they can serve as inspiration. So that's always super fun. And then here I have a printable journaling spot from my shop. I ended up not using it, so this might just wander over to my new journal. Same as this, this beautiful piece is by Jen. I'll leave her linked below. Um, I love her so much. This little piece here is just so fun. It's a little girly. She's so sassy. <laughs> so she's also gonna um, move over to the new journal. And then here we have, this is the thank you card that you get when you order in my shop. Um, and I thought I keep one in here in case I need a tip in. And then <laughs> we have a uh, Tet Lasso sticker sheet that my husband got <laughs> in the Apple store. And he was like, here, this might be fun for journaling. Uh, we love watching Tet Lasso. It's so good. So uh, yeah, I haven't used them yet. So these will also probably move over to my new journal. Yeah. I love having pockets in the front for this exact reason, for just things that you may, may end up using. And then here I did a sort of, hello, let me introduce myself to my new journal page. And then here you can see, started this on July 1st and ended it on August 24th, which is actually my birthday. Uh, at the beginning of this journal, uh, there was a little bit of getting used to the new uh, layout. Uh, before this, I had a B6, yes, a B6 journal, which is a lot smaller. And also, this was the first time I used a journal that had all kinds of different papers. So some of them have graph in the background, some of them have lines, some of them are uh, pattern papers. I have a flip through of this journal empty on my channel. So if you want to check that out. So there was a little bit of getting used to that, uh, both the different papers as well as the size. Um, these are really colorful. Love it. This is from my shop. These things are from Pam's, uh, Pocket Journal Pam's uh, Patreon. This I got in Happy Mail from Jen, and I used it as a little tip-in. And here I just did a, a image collage on this patterned paper. This is from Pocket Journal Pam. This is a drawing my husband did of our fiddly fig. Um, that plant looked so funny. It had lost all of its leaves when we brought it home except for one and we were like oh no please keep this one leaf because if we're gonna lose that last leaf you know game over <laughs> and luckily she pulled through and so then there was a second leaf and i think we're up to five leaves now so she's doing good but yeah she looked really quirky for 
a while there. This was part of one of, or not part of, but this was the prompt for the 2nd of July was highlights. And so I journaled about that one of the highlights of this year has been getting so connected to journaling again and the journaling community. And I love everything about it. I'm just so glad that I got back into it. And uh, I'm really appreciative of that. Uh, this <laughs> cutie here came also out of the prompt list. Uh, so again, prompts are so fun because you can end up, you know, surprising yourself with things you like or never thought of or never did in your journal. So the prompt was uh, botanicals, I think. Here, let me, let's pull out the prompt list. Three, botanicals. And so I had found this book about flower arranging at the Goodwill. And so I had taken out a bunch of pages out of that and fussy cut the some of the petals. No, not petals. These are actually just the... Do you call them flower heads? Blooms? Not sure. And so I created this little girl out of one of the roses. Just gave her... A head and some legs and hands. Really cute. <laughs> I really like how that turned out. Some more pocket journal. Pam. This is from a printable from my shop. Uh, this is a quote I really liked from by James Clear. I think I've mentioned him in my previous journal flip throughs as well. He wrote the book Atomic Habits, which I also can just highly recommend. And he has one of the best email newsletters, in my opinion. And oftentimes I find myself quoting him in my journal. Uh, this one says, your life bends towards what you accept. So that really stuck with me. And then I was also listening through The, La the, Lady. <laughs> the Lazy Genius Way by Kendra Adachi. And it talks all about, well, it talks about habit building, but also about how to simplify your life um, and how to still get things done that you don't have time for, like laundry, <laughs> and how to build systems that make those kinds of things easier. And I found her tips to be very useful. I even did an update on uh, what has continued to be helpful uh, about that stuff here. Um, so yeah, really cool. And then this was 4th of July, which wasn't very eventful for me and my husband. And then I tipped in this beautiful postcard and I have some more private journaling underneath. The Junk Journal of July prompt for the 4th was details, and so I had taken some snapshots of colorful details around my studio that I really enjoy and that bring me joy. Um, I haven't really found a 4th one yet, but I might end up putting another one in. Uh, all throughout July, we were in the process of moving, so certain things just kind of <laughs> didn't get finished. <laughs> oh, we're here. And then this was Junk Journal July number five, which, which was vintage. This is a vintage book page with this beautiful illustration of, I think these are lilies. Yeah, lilies. I actually didn't end up putting anything on the back just to keep that writing and be able to read that, which is really cute. This is also from a vintage book. This is Pocket Journal Pam, and then just some little torn off paper pieces and washi tape. Number six was Minimalist. Uh, yeah, this is from a printable in my shop with a little bit of a... a this was a pre-made cluster that I had. Um, where I just took a, a book page and some scrap pieces of paper. And I think this uh, flower here is from one of the Tim Holtz packs. And then just did a little bit of journaling. And then 
Uh, this is a tip-in or a tipped-in book page. And I love this illustration so much, so I just left it as it is. And that is my interpretation of minimalism. One thing, for example, that I figured out about my journaling style or that this journal taught me about my journaling style is that I'm a maximalist. So more on that uh, later, I think. And then again, the back I left pretty much untouched except for this little... Um, it's actually a paint card that you get in like the home uh, improvement stores. Uh, I love to use them for stuff like this. And this page, I love how this turned out. This is so cute. Uh, this is uh, from a vintage children's book. And then I just turned it into a pocket with this little tag in it. And then I have some thoughts on our new home on the back there that just sits in. And on this day... We were in the process of moving a couple things, not with a big truck or anything, but uh, we were sort of in between and my mother-in-law ended up feeding us in that day. Uh, and so this just really encapsulated that homey feeling of somebody uh, giving you food when you're desperate <laughs> and hungry and sort of in between places. And it's really nice to still have that homey feel if somebody can still provide that homey feeling for you if you're in between uh, this is from a, a free magazine about kentucky so i live in kentucky and uh i love how i ripped this out but because of that pink on the page it almost looks as if these are just mountains and then this is the pink evening sky or something and just integrates like that really like that um this is a sticker from a happy planner sticker book that i found at the dollar tree and this is from a printable from my shop and then this beautiful piece of i think it's wallpaper and then with the stamp on it is from happy mail from jen And then this is a this is my dream bike. Uh, we moved to an apartment where I could actually bike places. And as a European living in America, that's a big deal. <laughs> I'm so happy about this. Um, and so yeah, this is my dream bike that I found. Um, it's by this company called Public. If anyone is in the market for beautiful bikes in the U.S. That's why that's in there. This is a fun sticker, also from the Dollar Tree, with googly eyes. It's a superhero cat. And this is from Pocket Joan Pam. Love this blue kitty with the house. Oh, this, yes. Okay, so this is also <laughs> a result of being in the process of moving. And... I had gotten happy mail on the 9th. Uh, I got this beautiful palette of handmade watercolor from Italy. And I really wanted to journal about receiving this beautiful package because everything about it was just gorgeous. And, um, yeah, I just made a note of it and never got around to it and just skipped ahead. I don't know if I'm going to continue to do that because now it's just sort of... You know, I'd rather than add it on in the back and it's uh, non-chronological than now having to sort of go back and I've reserved these pages for this and what else would I put in there and things like that. Do you do that? Do you, like, keep journal pages empty to go back to and then struggle with actually returning to these pages? Or do you prefer just the chronological nature or do you not care let me know um i think this was inspired by the junk journal july prompt list again let's see that's the 13th yeah morning so the the colors were inspired by that and i think 
This is an image, again, from that free magazine that we sometimes get from our energy company, of all things, <laughs> with this beautiful sunrise. And then a birdie, because they sing in the morning. Uh, this is a quote by Brené Brown that she posted on her Instagram. I love uh, saving and printing out quotes or Instagram posts of any kind uh, and putting them in my journal because especially right now where we don't go out much, uh, that is still part of the day-to-day -day life and it is an ephemera piece of your experience right now. At least for me it is. And so I really like doing that. And especially if it's such a good quote. Um... And then 14, this is again inspired by a, the prompt, which was monochrome for the 14th. So I kept it all in this like pinkish peach. Um, this is again Pocket Journal Pam. This is, oh, these are Pocket Journal Pam. Love these date numbers as the strawberries, which is so cute. That was the day we got our U-Haul moving truck. And then here, this was sort of on the 15th. Um, the prompt for that was layered. And so because we were moving, I had all these pieces still lying around. And so I just stuck them on, uh, not caring if they went together necessarily. It was just sort of, it's just more of a collection of things that I had laying on my desk. And that was the first time that I realized that I personally am a very much a visual person, meaning I don't necessarily need writing to go along with every ephemera piece because I will remember what the context was just by the visuals themselves. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a major thing, I think, going forward with my journaling that will free me in how I journal, if that makes sense. I feel like <laughs> um, maybe that makes more sense in my head, but um, like these things are from Ingrid Fatel Lee. Uh, this was a post she did on her, I think on her blog about giving yourself a joyful manicure. And she had, she has uh, written out what, uh, nail polish colors she figured out works best if you want to have a rainbow manicure. So fun. <laughs> this little uh, strawberry person is by Pocket Journal Pam. This is from something I did. This is also something I did using stickers from my shop and just making a little love note. And then this is from a webinar that Ingrid did about uh, designing a joyful home. So yeah, it's all these like little pieces, but they they represent what's what was going on at that time. Um, this is uh, this postcard I got in an order that I did from the Moomin shop, and this is a sticker from my shop. And then in here I have a couple of photos and ephemera pieces from the move. They sit in there; they always want to fall out. Uh, but here again, that, that that's sort of when I started to go, oh yeah, I can just completely explode in layers. It, well, I mean, explode might be a little bit of a stretch, but um, I don't know. I felt more free to express myself visually and writing less, if that makes sense. Uh, this is a photo our neighbors, our new neighbors, um, brought us half a dozen donuts on our first day in the new house to welcome us in the to the neighborhood, which was so very sweet. This is Pocket Journal Pam. This is Pocket Journal Pam. Um, even less writing, but more visuals. Uh, this is a tag from a little... Or here, I can show you. Oh, sorry. Bump the microphone. Uh, this is a little fabric zoom zoom. Is that how you say? And um, a little Eeyore. My husband had found at the um, 
dollar store. He went over there to get some stationary items, and so he surprised him with this cutie. And this is um, about us hanging up our pictures and our art in our new apartment. Oh yeah, and this is uh, a drawing I did of the little... So. <laughs> Uh, and so we printed out a bunch of art, and this was a test print we did of my one of my husband's paintings. And so uh, I used that for my journal. Which is so fun. So that can that sits in here. This is a sticker from my shop. This is just a picture of my gallery wall in my office. This is a printable from my shop. And then this is, uh, I think, my favorite spread in this whole journal. Uh, I have a journal with me video about the spread, so I'll leave that linked below. This ribbon, I cut this to make it like little fringes. That was a bad idea because it keeps shedding all over the place. Uh... Yeah, this is a spread about why I love cats, and I think it turned out so cute and whimsical and so interactive, and it's visual, but I still have, you know, enough space to write about and reflect on my love for cats. But there's just something about how this came together uh, in such a visual way and so layered. So this journal, I feel like this is the accumulation uh, or result of using this journal is this spread. I don't think I would have created anything like this if not for using this specific journal, if that makes sense. Uh, and I think going forward, I'm really going to lean into the fact that, one, I am a visual person... So the imagery is more important to me uh, than the words. So I don't need as much space for words. And then also realizing that I love busy pages. I'm a maximalist. I love that there's so much going on here with different patterns and a little doily and... Oh no, not doily, but uh, vintage linen with the embroidery and these... Uh, corner flowers and things like that and things to pull out so I'm so happy that I figured this out it makes me so excited for my journals to come and then after this I did this spread about my birthday where this is a card my sister sent me uh, from Germany look how cute <laughs> She's adorable. And so it makes me so happy to have my sister's handwriting in here. No, won't go back in. Uh-oh. Don't want to rip it. Uh, and then this is a sticker from my shop. And I added these little... Uh, I think they're Tim Holtz. And then this is a, a book page uh, from a book that I found at the Dollar Tree, all about cakes, and they have these gorgeous illustrations on there. And so I added just some stickers and then a picture of the birth my birthday cake, <laughs> which uh, has Happy Birthday Mike on there. My name is Micah, uh, spelled M-A-I-K-E. So they basically just forgot the A. But um, it's just one of those things living in the U.S. where this name is not very common. I think like, so that just happened. And I think it's funny. It's all right. <laughs> so happy birthday, Mike. <laughs> and this is the card from my in-laws. And I added this sticker and this flower. And they got me an orchid. And so it was really sweet. They also gave me a matching card with this beautiful illustration. It's like little um, pieces of translucent paper. Really pretty. And then on the back there it says cake baking tips. So I, I 
positioned this so that you could still read this. Thought that was cute. And here I have the care instructions for the uh, orchids, and then just some pictures of me blowing out a candle, not on the birthday cake, uh, and some writing. Again, like just realizing I only need this little bit of writing because I have all these visuals to remind me of the day and uh, to tie that in what I what I learned about my journaling style, my new journal now is much smaller. This is a passport size. It's, it's a little bit shorter than A6. And I love it because I can add all the images. I don't need a lot of space for writing. And... I can be a maximalist in this. There's not a lot going on right now, and I don't have a lot of ephemera, but since I now realize that I love pages where a lot of things are going on, a smaller size allows me to do just that, right? I don't need a lot of ephemera to make it look all colorful and have all these fun tip-ins. So this is perfect. I'm just so excited for this. Um, so yeah, I'm so happy with this journal. I'm happy that it's done, <laughs> that I'm moving on now, but I'm so grateful for the experience of this. And so uh, I, I might... Um, try if I do have a lot of writing and processing to do I might do that just by writing it down without uh, decorating it in any way so I will try that and see where that takes me and then I think I'm gonna also make a journal similar to this where I can then for for the special occasions that do have a lot of big pieces of ephemera or a lot of ephemera like birthdays or just special memories I'm gonna make a handmade journal just for these kinds of things not for daily reflection or daily updates and then that journal can act as a almost like a highlight reel um, and another benefit of that is that then I feel comfortable you know having those kinds of journals just sit out and to share with family and friends to like just flip through because I know it's just you know celebrating the the more uh, special occasions if that makes sense so yeah uh, I hope this was inspiring to you uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up um, and if you like to see more journaling related videos uh, please subscribe and in the comments below, let me know what you've, what you're currently journaling in. Do you like smaller journals, bigger journals? Do you prefer the handmade journals or or um, junk journals? Or would you rather buy pre-made notebooks? Let me know. I'd I'd love to chat about all things journals. Okay, bye.